When you're fabric covering, one of the most important tools in your toolbox is going to be your small digital iron. Stewart Systems is the U.S. distributor for these irons. We highly recommend them. Uh, this is the tool that you're going to use the most when you're doing fabric. Uh, the big iron, you'll use some, and we'll cover that in a minute, but you'll definitely want to get the digital one. In the past, we used what was called the 21st century iron. This comes from the modeling industry. This is not a digital iron. It will work in a pinch, but we just have found them to not be reliable. They've got a mechanical thermostat on them, and we've had several instances where these have been dropped and the thermostat has gone to full temperature and people have damaged their fabric with them. So we don't really like these. Uh, if you do use them, be sure to calibrate it carefully. The digital iron uh, gives you several advantages. It's going to tell you what your temperature is exactly. It allows you to set it exactly, but it's giving you a real-time readout of the temperature so you know if it's not accurate. There's really no need to calibrate these. And we get a lot of tech calls of people uh, trying to calibrate irons without understanding properly how to do it. Uh, it, it leads to some interesting discussions. But the, the thing I want you to take away is don't even bother calibrating these digital irons. They are accurate. We've never had one that's not been accurate. They either work or they don't. Uh, and if they don't and you purchased it recently, let us know. We'll replace it. But we've had very, very few instances of those. If you wanted to check the temperature, this cover right is what we use to do that. Uh, and unfortunately, these are now obsolete. As of the making of this video, we still have good inventory, but eventually these are not going to be available. All you got to do is set it on there and just wait, and it spins around until it stops, and that'll be your temperature. These irons will read either Celsius or Fahrenheit, whichever you prefer, and they also come in both voltages for the United States or the European 220 volt. Uh, we carry both of them in stock. If you'd like to change from Fahrenheit to Celsius or back the other way, all you've got to do is hold the power button for five seconds and it'll switch. So it's very simple to switch. The temperature that you're normally going to run this iron at uh, is going to be around 250. That's adequate for ironing the fabric into the glue, uh, for shrinking fabric around corners. At times you may want to go higher, but we don't recommend that you exceed 350. At 375, you're going to do permanent damage to the fabric, so make sure to never go above 375. You should not need to go above 350. The next tool we want to talk about is the Wintersteiger iron. This is the large iron that we sell. Uh, you're going to use this for shrinking the large areas of fabric. Uh, you don't spend a lot of time with this, but it is a critical part of the operation, and we definitely recommend this iron. We've tried a lot of different irons over the years, and we found that this is the best one that, that we can find at this point. This is originally designed as a ski wax iron, uh, but it has the right features for what we're doing in fabric covering. A lot of old school people still use clothes irons. We don't recommend that. We've tested a lot of them. We found that the temperature fluctuation on the thermostat sometimes is as much as 50 to 60 degrees. And we've also found that when you check different places in the sole plate, it can be off 50 or 60 degrees just from one side of the sole plate to the other. So they're really not an ideal tool for this application. The Wintersteiger iron is a digital iron. It does monitor the temperature on a continuous basis. It's very accurate. Uh, these can be, you know, off plus or minus five degrees or so just by design. So, you know, don't expect it to be exactly accurate. But... If you're not calibrating it, you won't know anyway, and we don't recommend calibrating it. There's no need to. They're always accurate. We'll demonstrate that in a minute. One thing that you will notice when we turn this on, this iron reads in Celsius. It is not convertible like the small iron. Uh, so what I've done is I've just written a conversion table right here, and we'll show a close-up of this so you know what it is if you want to cheat and use that too. Now, if you're European and you're watching this video and you're snickering at us Americans, just remember, there's two kinds of nations in the world, those that use the metric system and those that have been to the moon. Just kidding, guys. We love you. <laughs> but it, we just have to convert it for our use because our manual is in Fahrenheit. So uh, either way, just make sure that you make that conversion accurate so you're not messing anything up. The wonderful thing about this iron is it maxes out at 350. There's no way that you can hurt the fabric with this iron. We'll never get a call uh, for fabric that's been damaged by too much heat. So we like that. 
But we do get a lot of tech calls with questions on calibrating it. So uh, people that insist on checking the temperature on it, verifying it. So we're going to go through that, how to do it, how not to do it. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. All we do is rotate the dial to turn it on. And you will have to rotate it fairly fast. There it goes. And if you want to verify that, again, we're going to come back to our cover right thermometer, the only thing that we recommend for calibrating these. And let's just see where it spools up to. Okay, it looks like we've settled in here. Our cover right has stopped turning. And yeah, we're right about 345, so we're good enough. Again, these cover rights and the irons can be off just a little bit. They can either be off plus or minus 5 degrees, perfectly close enough for what we're doing. Now, let's just see how the infrared compares on that. Oh, look at that, 150 Fahrenheit. So you can see infrared on a shiny surface does not work. We know we're at 350, roughly 345. I'm showing 155, 145, right around in there. So, and if you get a brand new iron and it's completely shiny, this one's got you know some wear on it, it'll read even lower. One of the tech calls that we frequently get at this stage of the covering process is people are attaching their fabric with the iron and they come back through and they brush wet glue through for the permanent bond and it releases what they've tacked down with the iron. There's a couple of reasons that that can happen. The first one, probably the most common, is that they didn't get enough glue on the airframe for a bed layer. Remember what we're doing with the iron is we're literally melting that glue and pressing the fibers of the fabric down into it. So if there's not enough depth of glue there to press the fibers into, you're not going to get a good tack. The other issue is people are not sometimes putting enough pressure on it. Remember, we're pushing that fabric down into the glue itself. So it takes some pressure to push that down in. If you're not applying enough pressure, it may release when you put wet glue on it. 